Hey everyone, David here again. It has been a very, very long time since I've done a video. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I'm not going to get into why. It's just things have gotten crazy. Hopefully everything's in focus, so if it's not, I'm really sorry. I'm using a manual focus lens because I did have to sell off a lens to buy another lens I really needed, and that isn't going to work in uh, my kitchen. It's too close, uh, and that lens is a little bit longer than what I'm using right now. Anyways, um, it's November. It's cold. It's gray outside. I love it. I love this time of year. The newest book in the Last Kingdom series from Bernard Cornwell came out, Sword of Kings. Actually, I ordered this from Amazon UK. I don't even think it's available in the US yet. I always order it from Amazon UK because I can't wait to read it. I've been a fan of this series since book three, and that's book 12. But when that book comes out and I'm reading about the Viking invasion of England and it's cold outside, my Viking spirit starts to rise. And what better way to channel your inner Viking than with some mead? When people think Vikings, they think of Vikings with their mead horns, drinking mead, and and pillaging through the land and so what I wanted to do is show you all how to make meat at home now, if you don't know what meat is it's honey te it's technically honey wine it's not really wine but it's the closest thing some people will call it honey liquor and that's not true liquors distilled and wines fermented and this is fermented as well you're not also not going to be getting crazy high alcohol content it's going to be uh, 12 to 13 percent uh, based on what you do, uh, how you make it. I love mead. You can buy it at the stores. The problem is mead's quite expensive. And if you want to kind of try new profile, uh, taste profiles, it can get quite pricey and it's a lot cheaper to make at home. And you can experiment with flavors that way uh, on a fairly better budget than if you went to the store. It's about $30 if you're buying. We'll grab my wife's. If you bought a big bottle like this, you're looking at 30 or 40 bucks for kind of low-end stuff um, but at home you can make quite a bit more uh, I have two batches I have a, a cherry um, cinnamon and then I have just a plain meat here and I got six of these size bottles out of one gallon and one of those size bottles is gonna be about nine or ten dollars at the store and all told I'm only spending about fifteen dollars to make a gallon so anyways I'm gonna teach you guys how to do it we're gonna jump into it right now so that I don't ramble too much. I've done a couple things off camera just to kind of make this video a little quicker. Uh, the first thing uh, you do, everything that I'm gonna be showing you guys is listed below on links. If you guys can check that out, that would actually help this channel a lot. Um, but the first thing you do is you make sure you clean and you sanitize everything. Uh, there's several different ways you can sanitize. You can use this, um, diluted uh, bleach water, but if you do that, you have to make sure you rinse it off completely before you start doing it uh, there's a product called uh, star sand that uh, a lot of people use um, if you really want to be on the budget and I know I'm gonna get yelled at for this you can just make sure you wash it really 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 well with soap and water uh, there'll probably be someone else that yells at me about that because that's not really looked too highly upon in the mead world but it is what it is if you don't have access to the other stuff so the first step is to get your materials which is a glass carboy, some kind of airlock, a funnel is back here. You're gonna have some kind of yeast. Yeast. I use uh, Lavalin D47, it's a really popular yeast. You can use other types of yeast as well, like champagne yeast, and your, your um, alcohol content will go up to about, I don't wanna say 18% on a gallon, but it will go a little bit more, but it's gonna be very dry. And of course, honey. Uh, honey oh, and water. Um, I highly recommend buying distilled water. Don't use water out of your tap. Everything, again, will be linked below except for honey. I highly, highly, highly recommend finding a local source of honey to be able to make your mead just to be able to support beekeepers in your area. Plus, if you have a local source, you know it hasn't gone through a whole lot of processing. You want to use um, as close to raw honey as you can. You don't necessarily want to use it right off the... Uh, the honeycomb because then you have to boil it and get all the impurities out but you know local honey is really not hard to find in most areas so another thing I did off camera here is I put a little bit of distilled water in it in uh, a measuring cup I put it in the microwave and I got it up to the pack recommends what 90 95 degrees to 98 degrees and then you put the yeast in it and stir it up and that rehydrates your yeast 
and then you kind of let it sit for a little bit to kind of rehydrate before you mix it in. And then I have honey sitting in a pan or a pot of warm water. You don't have to do that, but warm honey pours a lot easier than uh, cold honey, obviously. So what I'm gonna do here to start, I'm gonna put a little bit of water in the bottom. Use my funnel here. I'm not gonna put too much. I just want to do this before I put the honey in so that I can kind of mix the honey up a little bit. That's really about all I want right now. I will be filling that up a lot more as we go. Let me make sure this, all right, that's not too hot to handle. Just warm enough for it to be at a pourable level. All right, so this is, uh, and I didn't tell you this, for one gallon, you're gonna want three to four pounds of honey. Uh, this is about four pounds of honey. Now, the more honey you add doesn't necessarily mean the more alcohol you get. That depends on the yeast. It's just gonna be how sweet it is. So if you like a really sweet mead and you don't wanna have to go through the process of back sweetening, sweetening which is a whole other ball game. All right, add the honey. Again, four pounds of honey. If you add five pounds, you're just gonna get a really sweet mead. And I don't particularly like too sweet. I like just a little bit of a honey flavor in there. Now what I'm gonna do while that kind of drains, because I like to get as much of the honey out as I can, because honey's not cheap. Add a little bit of water, just kind of swirl it around the bottle. It doesn't really work because it's colder, cooler water, but that down in there. I forgot to grab a product out or something that there we go raisins and I'll get to why I pulled out raisins here in a minute so what I'm gonna do before I go any further is just put the rubber stopper in kind of shake it up really get the honey mixed up before I continue to add stuff That's good. Pull that stopper out. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring the water up to, there's writing on the carboy that says one gallon. I kind of want to fill the water up to there before adding the yeast. I'm sure this is really interesting to watch someone pour water in a container, but it is what it is. So that's where I want to stop the water because now I'm going to be pouring the yeast in. This is rehydrated yeast. It kind of has a milky look to it and it smells like bread. It smells really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and pour that in. I'm going to, whoa, don't drop that. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the honey and just put a little bit of water in here, swirl it around. You want to get as much of the yeast in there as possible. You really don't want to waste your yeast because that's what makes the alcohol. Now, I have another batch going. I haven't pulled it over. You want to leave a little bit of head space because as the yeast begins to ferment, it's going to bubble. And the first, once it first starts, you're going to get a lot of suds coming up. And if you fill it up too much and you don't give yourself enough headroom, it can actually pop out of the... Uh, I just totally had a brain fart and forgot what this thing was called. This is an airlock. You want to leave a little bit of headroom because if you don't and that uh, it starts to ferment, the yeast starts fermenting and it's going to create carbon dioxide and it can actually blow out through the airlock. It can be a hot mess all over your ceiling. It's not going to explode. You don't have to worry about that. This is going to be messy coming out of the airlock. So I've got my yeast in. Before I add more water, I might want to add a little bit more than this. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to pull out the raisins. Raisins are a good natural yeast nutrient. Even though yeast eats honey and sugars and that's how it, it ferments, it still needs nutrients. Now there's a lot of chemical nutrients you can buy and there's a lot of debate of whether raisins actually are nutrients for yeast or not. 
but I can tell you from experience that I forgot to add raisins and it took three or four days for the fermentation to start. When, when I add raisins, it only takes anywhere from 12 to 24 hours for the fermentation to actually start. So you just wanna throw in a few of these. Don't need to add too many. Definitely don't need to add the whole box. That's about it. Add the raisins. And then I'm just gonna shake it all up really, 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 really well. Put that rubber stopper on there again. Let me grab a paper towel. And you're gonna shake it up for a few minutes. I'm not gonna let you have you guys sit and watch me do that. I'll go ahead and do a cut right here. But uh, yeah, you definitely wanna shake it up to kind of get it all uniform. Make sure all the honey is mixed up as best as you can and that the yeast is all mixed up in there as well. And then we'll come back and check and see if I have too much headroom or not enough headroom. All right, so I have this all shaken up. Everything is mixed in really well in there. The uh, raisins have sunk to the bottom and that's a good thing as it starts to ferment and it starts to create the carbon dioxide that's being released. The raisins will come to the top and that's a good sign of fermentation. Now at this point you can get a hydrometer and test your gravity and you test it at the beginning and you test it at the end and that tells you how much alcohol you've had uh, created with this. But I've done this so long now, I'm not gonna worry about it. I know that with this exact recipe that I made, every time I've done it, I've gotten anywhere from 12 to 13 ABV. I've never had higher with this yeast. I've never had lower with this yeast either. So I'm not gonna do that. But if you're just starting, it might be recommended. I'll link one below. Anyways, uh, this is good headroom. If you see that the um, airlock isn't bubbling quite as much or it's just not quite as active, you can add a little bit more. You don't want too much headroom because it allows oxygen in. You don't want this to oxidize. Once you have this completed, you want to put it somewhere and leave it there while it ferments. It's going to take anywhere from 12 to 40 hours to start. So if you don't see the bubble starting right away, don't worry about it. It's not a problem. It's going to start eventually. Um, but yeah, I think this is a pretty good headroom. I might add a little bit more water um, in a day or so, but I'm gonna make sure that it starts fermenting first to kind of see where it's at. The next step is to get the airlock on, and that's this thing that I forgot what it was earlier. There's several different types. I like these kind. There's an S-shaped uh, one. I've had those before. Um, they're okay. I don't, I don't have anything against them. Uh, so in your airlock, Go ahead and get it into your rubber stopper before you put your liquid in. Makes it a little easier. I like to have it coming out of the bottom just a little bit. Um, I've had it up in there. It kind of reacts funny like that. It, it doesn't quite filter the air out. I don't know why that is, uh, but a friend of mine told me to make sure it comes out all the way and it, it fixed the problem right away. You're gonna fill it up with a liquid. There's a fill line. I'm gonna use distilled water and apple cider vinegar. Uh, some people, We'll use star sand, uh, vodka, Everclear. Uh, you don't want to use like a bourbon or something like that. You want to clear alcohol if you do that. Um, I'm just going to use some uh, apple cider vinegar and some water. And what that's going to do, because fruit flies are going to want to get into this. In fact, I've had fruit flies get into my airlock. And if you do have that happen, don't worry. It's working. It's the whole point of the airlock is to keep stuff like that out. As long as it does, the fruit flies don't actually get into your mead, you're good. Uh, if that happens, just take this off, wash it, sanitize it, put it back on. But if you're using vodka or Everclear or the um, apple cider vinegar that I use, uh, it's gonna kind of prevent that. And if they do get in it, it's gonna kill any kind of bacteria that they might be bringing because they, one fruit fly in a gallon can actually spoil the entire gallon. So I'm just gonna put a couple drops in there of apple cider vinegar. That's all I need. You can barely even see. Then I'm just gonna put the rest distilled water to the fill line. Drop this feller on it, the lid. And now I'm good to go. Uh, I'm gonna let it sit on the fermentation you want to push the rubber stopper in quite a ways. You don't want to push it in too far. This rubber stopper might be a little too small for this particular carboy. Um, it's better than the other one I have. You don't want to push it in too far that you can't get it out, but you also don't want it slipping out as it starts to ferment. 
and the gases start building up, it might want to try and push it out a little bit. You want to have a very good seal. It wants to be airtight. The airlock is what you want to be the only form of, uh, um, what am I trying to say? CO2, CO2 release because no oxygen can get in there. If you don't have a good seal, oxygen gets in, you ruin your mead. So this is gonna take about 12 to 48 hours to start fermenting. And I'm gonna let it sit on this primary fermentation for probably a month. And then I'm going to rack it into another carboy. And that's when I'm gonna add my flavors. Now I'm not gonna make you guys wait a month until I do that. I have another batch that is actually just about done. And I'm gonna be putting um, juniper berries and some cinnamon in it. And I might go get some oak, um, oak pieces to put in there. I'm not quite certain. And so in about two weeks, we'll revisit this uh, project. But in that time, there's gonna be some other projects kind of going along with this. I'm calling it the, the Suburban Viking for all of everybody that loves Vikings, but really can't get out into the woods. There's still really awesome things you can do at home that the Vikings inspired. Um, but that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, I'm sorry it went really fast, but it's super simple. I didn't know how to slow it down other than that. Uh, if you have any questions, ask below and I'll try my best to help you all out with it. And in a couple weeks, I'll show you guys how to rack it into another one and add some flavors and make your meat really good. With that being said, I'll see you all in a future video.